Tier lists are rarely given any context. Without the right information, knowing something is as good as useless. That's where we've got your back, summoners. Welcome back to another tier list analysis, where we'll be taking a look at patch 13.8. We've got a big list of changes that'll hopefully open up the meta a bit. In case you're new here, hello, my name is Crumbs, and besides our tier list, I'll also be highlighting one to two champions in each role. We'll be sure to give you the context you need to understand what makes them strong and what their hardest matchup is. Let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, we'll be taking a look at our top lane tier list. Our first champ to highlight is gonna be none other than Poppy. This hammer-wielding Yordle is receiving some nice buffs to further increase her win rate. Poppy is a great answer to any champions with a dash, which happens to be quite a few champions at A or above. Besides that, she's a reliable tank that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most fighters. If we had to choose just one champion that she can't keep up with, I would have to be Olaf. Rightfully sitting at the OP tier, he's able to out-sustain your damage and can eventually run you down at any chance he gets. Unlike most matchups, you can't even ult him away to save yourself. If you're looking to take advantage of her powerful buffs, be sure to permaban Olaf whenever possible. For our second highlighted top laner, we've got Kennen. It seems his buffs have really paid off. Not only has his win rate increased, but his overall presence can be seen in both solo queue and pro play alike. Kennen offers a dominating laning phase that easily translates into a powerful late game. With a single ultimate, he can decide a teamfight and win his team the game. Sure, he may not get a direct buff, but with the state of the meta, he'll continue to thrive. While Malphite may be getting a few nerfs, we still recommend banning him if you're looking to play Kennen. His ability to constantly harass you during the laning phase makes it hard for you to use your early power. On top of this, Malphite gets extremely tanky and becomes a team fighting menace. There's no reason to risk flipping the game based on a matchup. With him being OP tier at the moment, just ban Malphite. Before we continue on to our jungle list, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. Sure, these videos can be a great resource, especially if you combine them together, but nothing compares to our $7.99 monthly subscription where you can get exclusive access to in-depth courses and bootcamp content. If you want a more hands-on approach, don't worry, we have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive back into the video. Pulling us back in, let's take a look at our jungle tier list. The first champion we'll be highlighting here is Lilia. With so many indirect buffs these past few patches and a few direct ones coming soon, she's incredibly strong. Being an AP jungle means she's able to provide some damage if your team ever becomes a bit too AD heavy. On top of this, she has quite a few builds that can turn her from a high AP damage dealer to a bruiser for her team. With the simplicity of her kit and her amazing clear, you can pick her up with little to no practice. So if you're looking for a powerful AP jungler to add to your roster, be sure to try out Lilia. If you're looking to play Lilia, be sure to have Jarvan the Fourth as your go-to ban. He sits at the top of the tier list due to his incredible early game power and his ability to out-tempo nearly every jungler in the game. While Lilia is a great skirmisher, she can't keep up with the amount of ganks that Jarvan pulls off while she works to hit her spikes. On top of this, he can eventually trap her in his ultimate, which makes her high movement speed feel worthless. For our next notable pick, we've got Kane. This versatile jungler has gotten a few indirect and direct buffs over the past few months. With some small nerfs coming his way this patch, he'll still continue to be a powerful pick. His ability to start raptors and quickly clear camps make him very strong in the current meta. Pair this with his different playstyles due to the Darken and Shadow Assassin modes and you've got an amazing jungler. While he may not offer the simplicity and clear of someone like Lilia, he's still worth checking out due to his carry potential. With enough time, practice, and patience, you can hone your skills and become a Ross or the Shadow Assassin and carry your allies to victory. While Kane's versatility and great clear are amazing points, it's actually what makes him weak to champions like Nidalee. Kane requires farm and orbs to get his form, which is usually done rather peacefully, as he full clears and ganks when possible. When facing Nidalee, however, you constantly have to be wary of her sitting in your jungle and picking you off. If you're looking to play Kane, be sure to permaban Nidalee. She's an extremely high-tempo jungler that will always be at the play before you, 
On top of this, she can single-handedly invade and kill you. If you get behind enough, you become useless, so don't take a chance, just ban her. Moving on, let's take a look at our mid lane tier list. Here, we're gonna be focusing on Vex. This magic-wielding Yordle walks around with her shadow and claims a spot in the S tier. Her ability to function as both a control mage and burst mage makes her extremely adaptable. On top of this, she's able to roam around the map and get her allies ahead thanks to her amazing ultimate. She doesn't really have many bad matchups and is overall a pretty safe champion. Vex is able to dominate the laning phase and push her lead elsewhere or she can sit back and make plays with her jungler if she needs to play safer. Overall, she's just a great pick to have. Now, we did say that Vex doesn't really have any bad matchups. Well, that's not including Cassiopeia. Cassio is an incredibly difficult lane to play since one small misstep allows her to run you down thanks to Ghost and her passive. While Vex is known for her skirmish and scaling, Cassio unfortunately does both far better. Your only real chance at winning this matchup is getting wave prior and coin flipping roams around the map. Rather than risk the game on a few spontaneous roams, just ban Cassio and avoid it altogether. Moving on to our next highlighted champion, we've got Ari. Ever since her rework, Ari was known to be one of the best mid laners in the game. While she lost a bit of her burst power, she became an incredible blind pick. Having little to no losing matchups means she can easily go neutral or even win her lane in most games. With her rework, she quickly became pick or ban due to this strength. However, a few nerfs and meta shifts have taken her out of the game due to her low pick and ban presence. That being said, Hari is still fairly powerful and can easily take over games if played correctly. While Ari may be extremely blindable, she still struggles with a few matchups if played incorrectly. One of these being Tristana mid. Trist is able to constantly keep wave prior and if you ever roam on a bad timer, she'll take multiple plates. This not only sets you behind, but it gives her a huge lead that she can now use to get her allies ahead. On top of this, Tristana has constant kill pressure on Ari. You can charm her out of the air and ult away, but even then, if the Trist is good enough, you'll still die. While this matchup does rely on Tristana playing it correctly more so than it does for Ari, it's still not worth risking if you can't afford the ban. Plus, Tristana is one of the best mid laners in the game, so it's not as if your ban would be wasted anyways. Moving us into the bottom lane, let's take a look at our tier list. Down here in the bot lane, we'll be highlighting Kogma. This void creature is getting some pretty nice buffs this patch that'll not only increase his kiting potential, but damage as well. On top of this, with hyper carries like Jinx thriving in the meta, you can completely outscale and outlane them. While Kogma may be a bit intimidating due to his low mobility, his extremely high damage and carry potential more than make up for it. Make sure you practice your kiting and be mindful with your positioning. One small misstep and the only damage you'll be doing is your passive's explosion. That being said, you should definitely ban Leona if you're looking to play him. Not only is she receiving massive buffs this patch, but she's an incredibly powerful engage tank that can lock you down and kill you with her team. Pair her with someone like Draven and you're now facing one of the hardest lanes for Kog'Maw. Even if you run cleanse, you likely won't survive her powerful CC chain. You'll cleanse her long range ultimate just to eat her EQ combo into a low cooldown Q afterwards. Rather than waste gold on QSS and a summoner spell cleanse, just ban Leona altogether so you can get more space to breathe. Plus, I'm sure your enchantress support will greatly appreciate not facing her either. Last but certainly not least, we've got our support tier list. For our highlighted support, we've got none other than Alistar. This powerful bull has been getting non-stop buffs for patches on end now. While he was already doing relatively fine in the support role, it seems Riot really wants to see him in pro play. This big influx of buffs have made him an amazing engage support that can take over the game with great macro plays. On top of this, Alistar is able to be one of the best frontliners in the game thanks to his ultimate significantly reducing damage. That being said, you do not want that ultimate on someone like Silas. With the buffs this patch increasing his ult duration, this is only going to make it even stronger on Silas. Think about it, 8.5 seconds of borderline invulnerability? That gives Silas enough time to cast two entire rotations of spells before taking any real damage. While picking Malphite into Silas can be pretty awful for your team, it's really no better than picking Alistar while Silas is up. Make sure you ban him, 
or else you and your team are going to be facing an unkillable AP Bruiser. Even if Silas doesn't take your ultimate for some reason, he still out skirmishes you and is able to match your plays relatively well. Honestly, just don't risk it and make sure to perma ban that champion. And that brings us to the end of our tier list for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family over at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day.